trust, so that's good. Um, I'm going to give thanks to Benny Cole for um, giving us a little manicure or say in the end of our sales. 40, 40 culture um, update for the, for the outside grounds. I think that's a nice landscape. And then we've got some great sort of opening. Um, yesterday it was a busy day. We had uh, two sets of 60 students from St. Andrews Institute. So we're going to be in the here. Which is good because we didn't have many uh, visitors uh, since September. Uh, I think it's Wednesdays and Fridays are good, but Thursdays and Wednesdays. Uh, we have two new volunteers to the society. Uh, Cora Carey uh, and a lady called Sarah Boyden. Um, about the journal, um, I just did the final proof today and it's back from publishers. Uh, Anne and I um, edited that weekend, sent me in and edited one little slide to change the name. So that's it. So if about another 10 days and we should be nearly done. We've got a very special event on the 11th of November, that's the first thing, 11th of November. Um, I don't know if any of you all know about Joseph E. He um, was a designer of the Cotton Gin in the Bahamas, and he was also the architect and builder of uh, St. Matthew's Anglican Church. His great, great, great grandson, Christopher E., who is 99 years old, is coming to the society. Um, it's in conjunction with the Ministry of Tourism. They asked me if I would be willing to force him and said yes, very good. So that should be nice. And then in December, uh, we have uh, Dr. Jean Baxter coming. Um, the the archae archaeological survey of Farquharson's estate in San Salvador. So that should be very interesting too. And so I'll call upon uh, Dr. Gail Saunders to introduce our guests. I felt extremely honored to have been asked by Dame Marguerite Pindley to write her biography. At first, I hesitated when originally approached. First, I had never written a biography. And secondly, I was still working full time as a director of archives. However, as you know now, I was persuaded by Dame Marguerite and Winston, my late husband. They both had confidence in me. I began the research and interviews in about 2003, 2004. I can't remember the exact date. I had warned um, that it would take a very long time. Um, we started by doing interviews. I, I, at night I would go to 
Dame Marguerite's house and interview her um, on different aspects of her life. The book really comprises these interviews. Research from newspapers and help for this was given by Joanne Mara, who's here today. And of course, books like Sir Lyndon's biography by Michael Creighton and the speeches um, which were um, edited by Patricia Roker. The, and it's entitled The Vision. Also, I interviewed other people like um, Dame Marguerite's aunt, um, the late now, um, Enid Duncombe, and a friend, Bernice Cooper, Sir Arthur Folks, now Governor General, and Leonard Archer, who was the former president of the Bahamas Union of Teachers. I also interviewed her children, Obi, Leslie, Michelle, and Monique. One of the early things I did was to make chapter headings and had them approved by Dame Marguerite. You may ask, how did I write the book? Because I was still working, and I still am, actually. I wrote the book in the evenings. Um, I would come home, rest a little while, eat, and then start. And some of the writing, in fact, was done in Totola, the British Virgin Islands. I was there along with the now director of archives, Elaine Toot. We had been asked to help them put their, um, the nucleus of their archives in order. And we knocked off about 4.30, and the same thing. I was able to rest afterwards, ate, and then got to work. Um, I was younger then. <laughs> I'm not a very good typist, and I'm very slow. So everything, the whole book was written by hand and typed by Helen Smith. Each chapter was checked by me and then by Dame Marguerite. And when the manu manu manuscript sorry, was completed, I asked Mrs. Jennifer Minnis to read and to edit it. Then the manuscript was mailed after we um, went through it ourselves. It was mailed to Macmillan, um, and they had editors as well who came back and forth to me on email, and some of the answers had to be quite long, and I spent hours just pep, pep. <laughs> But I, I did, um, we got everything in order, I hope. It was a, the whole thing. I suppose uh, the editing and so forth, back and forth, was a difficult exercise. Um, and of course, the photographs that you see enhance this book very much. They, they only wanted us to have what, 90, 96. We ended up with 189, I think. But as Sean McQueenie wrote in the foreword of the book, the photographs really tell a story of their own, covering much more than words could ever. However, I hope you don't just look at the pictures. Copyright was a problem. Most of the photographs were not stamped with the photographer's, photographer's name. However, De Marguerite remembered the majority of the photographers, and they were all asked um, by her for the permission to publish and they have been acknowledged and uh, disclaimer is in the book if anybody was not acknowledged. I thank you Dame Marguerite for your patience and as I warned you it would take a long time and I suppose longer than you anticipated but it did materialize and it was very exciting when it's exciting with books when you can hold a book after you've gone through, it's pure, a lot of it is pure slog, you know, um, editing and rewriting and so forth. But, but when you have 